This video was made possible by Curiosity Stream and Nebula. Sign up for less than $15 a year and you can watch extended and ad-free cuts of all BioArk videos on Nebula. Black-tailed prairie dogs are one of the most impressive burrowers in the entire animal kingdom, and one of the cutest. These members of the squirrel family achieved their own sort of manifest destiny. Their range stretches all the way from Mexico to Canada across the Great Plains. During the day, they graze on the plains, and at night, they duck into protective burrow systems to sleep. Although, who knows what they're really up to down there? For all we know, prairie dogs could be smuggling illicit substances up to Canada, like milk that actually comes in cartons. These burrows are maintained meticulously, and they're passed down from generation to generation. A conglomeration of burrows and its inhabitants is called a town, which are aggregations of harem-y polygamous family groups. They probably took inspiration from the white-tailed prairie dogs, whose range stretches into Utah. In each town, there will be around 20 to 60 burrows per acre depending on the terrain, although they aren't too picky about the terrain they dig in. After all, their range does extend into Oklahoma. They'll dig in a loamy or clayey soil or even gravel. One preference they do have is for soil that will not collapse on top of them, perhaps because they want to, like, not be buried alive. They dig their burrows two to five meters deep into the plains with tunnels up to 10 meters long underground that lead into many different chambers such as nurseries, sleeping chambers, chambers that are warmer for winter months, chamber pot chambers, chambers for the event that Neville Chamberlain comes to visit, and chambers dug out specifically to prevent flooding. Each burrow has up to about six entrances, and you can spot them because they often have a ring of dirt piled around them. These dirt rings actually serve important purposes for our prairie friends. Prairie dogs can stand on top of them to spot predators from farther away. They mitigate flooding. They are piles of dirt, which is just objectively cool. And, most remarkably, they help to ventilate the burrows. Let me explain. There isn't much remarkable about West Texas where many prairie pals live, but it certainly is windy. Texas wrangles so much wind with turbines that it's the state which produces the most renewable energy. And remarkably, prairie dogs use some of these same wind wrangling techniques. The reason that wind turbines are so tall isn't so they look as ominous as possible. It's because wind blows faster higher up off the ground than it does closer to the surface. Prairie dogs also know this, so they build their entrance mounds at different heights. Upwind, they build elevated entrance holes with dirt mounds. Downwind, the entrance holes will be closer to the surface. Due to Bernoulli's principle, there will be lower pressure over the elevated hole where the wind is flowing faster than it is over the lower hole. And because of this, air will be sucked into the lower opening then flow out of the higher opening. And all of this creates a constant inflow of fresh air into the burrow. Yep, that's right. Prairie dogs discovered fluid dynamics and used it to keep their homes comfortable. This whole technique is called the Venturi effect, and it's also the reason why it's so windy between tall skyscrapers. Some human architects have also harnessed the Venturi effect to keep the beautiful Hawa Mahal of Jaipur cool during the summer. The largest ever recorded prairie dog town, however, dwarfed the Hawa Mahal. Really, it was more of a prairie dog megalopolis. Naturalist Vernon Bailey discovered it at the turn of the 20th century in the Texas Panhandle, because everything's bigger in Texas after all. He estimated that it spanned 25,000 square miles, which is an area larger than the island of Ireland. Bailey described all of these prairie dogs as clean and good-natured which is great because he reckoned there were about half a billion of them, so it would have really sucked if they were messy and mean. To put it in a perspective, his estimate of the population at half a billion is tens of millions more residents than all of the United States has, and it's a hundred times the number of people who live in Ireland today. Also, it's around a hundred times the number of prairie dogs that live in all of Texas today. One of the byproducts of the urbanization of the Great Plains was a bunch of dead prairie dogs. You see, prairie dogs feed on grasses, so many ranchers view them as competition on their pastures. And also, it was a popular urban legend at the time that cattle and horses could fall into prairie dog holes and snap a leg, which only exacerbated any ill will that ranchers had for them. While the pups might not actually be the harbingers of broken limbs, they are actually plagued by disease including by the literal bubonic plague, which can be passed to livestock and kill them. 
So, over the past hundred years, ranchers, farmers, and vengeful people with the bubonic plague exterminated prairie dogs. The rodents have been poisoned, shot, drowned, and buried alive in their own homes. And today, exotic pet traders will slurp the pups out of their burrows with vacuums. The black-tailed prairie dog population of Texas has decreased by almost 99%. It was really a wonder that more weren't killed to be eaten, but naturalist Vernon Bailey reckoned they were saved from that fate because no one would buy the meat of anything that was called a dog. There were almost one billion prairie dogs in Texas during the days of the cowboy, but now there are only around eight million of them left. However, despite this dramatic decrease, their vulnerability status is thankfully listed as least concern, and they still occupy most of their historic range. So don't worry, you can still go out to West Texas to test for yourself whether or not you can break your ankle in a prairie dog hole. Or, if that sounds like a bad time, you could check out this video on Nebula to learn about the white-tailed prairie dog, too. Or otherwise, you could check out Going Nuts, Tales from Squirrel World on CuriosityStream to learn more about the squirrel family in general. Or one of the other thousands of titles on CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is not a small body of water that's curious but is a streaming platform for educational and non-fiction shows. And if you're a fan of BioArk, there's plenty of gorgeous wildlife documentaries on here, and documentaries on everything else under the sun, and all for less than $15 a year when you use the code BioArk, or follow the link down in the description below. And speaking of celestial bodies, you could also check out Nebula, which is a streaming platform that I created with a pink toolbox from Target alongside my other creator friends and foes, like Sam from Wendover, Brian from Real Engineering, Evan from Polymatter, and Joseph J Dog from Real Life Lore. Together, we created something so beautiful that it was nominated for the highly esteemed and coveted Streamy Award. And more importantly, it gave us all a platform where we are free to create content that won't be suppressed by the dreaded YouTube algorithm. So you can see what's under the black tail of black-tailed prairie dogs if you're picking up what I'm putting down. Or see JT from Second Thought series on the F-word. And no, not the naughty F-word, but the algorithm suppressing F-word. Plus, you get to see extended ad-free cuts of every BioWork video a few days before they come up on YouTube. Alright, so since you made it through the ad, I want to tell you about something really cool about a different species of prairie dog. The Gunnison's Prairie Dog. They live in the Four Corners region of the United States living in social colonies, communicating adorably through forms of physical contact like kissing and cuddling, but also through a bunch of barks that scientists think might be one of the most advanced forms of natural language among animals. Their barks are one or two syllables, and by changing the pitch and duration of each bark, they can signal to their prairie pals the presence of different predators and other general warnings and all clear signs. Researchers have classified 11 different barks so far, and these barks can be heard up to a mile away, keeping other prairie dogs in the colony alert for up to half an hour, just like you can hit the bell and subscribe button to stay alert for new BioArk videos. Thanks for watching.